Hey guys, Becky here with Design Bundles, and of course I'm super excited today to bring you another great project. We are using our Cameo, but you can do this with any cutting machine. So what are we working with today? How about making our own laptop skin? All right guys, so here we are in Silhouette Studio. Now you know this is my my favorite designing software and you can do this in other softwares. Uh, this project, for example, um, if you do the right measurements, you can do it in Cricut, um, but it is, in my opinion, definitely much easier to um, go ahead and set it up in Silhouette. So I'm gonna open my uh, File Explorer window so I can just drag and drop some of the items I'm working with today. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop the um, real life photo that I took, right? Let's move it out of the way. And then of course I downloaded a new mandala and I'm gonna use the SVG format. I'll just drag and drop that over as well. Um, I'm gonna move my mandala out of the way and I wanna focus on this guy right here. So I'm going to size, um, let's see, let's start with 15. I don't want it too small because I mean, I still wanna be able to see it. Uh, you can zoom in if you want. So what I've done, now I bought, let's not get excited. <laughs> but, uh, my, my plan is not to completion yet, but I did purchase a MacBook. And um, I got a really great deal, actually a refurbished model. So I'm pretty excited about it. But I, this is also what I'm gonna consider a play computer. No, it has decent um, stats, but I just wanna kinda explain a little bit of what I'm doing because I get really shy about putting decals on things that I handle a lot. So this is not going to be my main laptop. And the reason that that is, um, I don't wanna put them on things I handle a lot is because eventually the decals will wear off. And then, you know, then you gotta remove the rest of it and then you gotta remove the residue. Now I'm not saying that you can't do that. Um, there are a lot of people that enjoy decorating their hardware. Um, I'm just not one of them. So I, you know, I stick my decals on things that, or at least in areas that aren't gonna be handled. Now for this one, I actually have ordered a clear case. All right, so I am gonna cut and put a decal on the back and then there will be a clear case that will snap over it so that it's not gonna peel. You also have the option to put the decal on the clear case instead of on your computer, right? Right, okay. So I just kinda wanted to explain a little bit of that going forward. Now, this is super easy because in Silhouette Studio, you have your rounded corner rectangle, right? And what I wanna do so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rounded rectangle. Now, I just wanna say I did my very, very best to draw a, um, or to take a picture straight down. Obviously, I was still a little bit off. My rounded rectangle does not fit this exactly. But that's also why I have the yardstick down here at the bottom. You do that with a measuring tape. If you don't have any of that, you can, um, what I've done in the past is just put like a little piece of transfer paper. Like if you have the transfer paper that has the grid or include your cutting mat in the picture, you just need something that's gonna help you size this to scale, okay? And now I, I understand that there are um, MacBook templates out there already. I'm not saying you can't use those, but I'm showing you this because this is the, uh, what I'm gonna say, the best way for all your projects. Like a lot of times I get questions about like, hey, how do I, how do I choose the right size for my project? Well, um, I mean, this is kind of what I'm recommending here, guys. Um, you really get the opportunity to, and all I'm doing, I'm adjusting these nodes right here so that, um, and then I'm watching the edges to make sure that I'm getting them as close as possible. Now we're gonna do a slight internal offset. So this does not have to fit exactly, um, but just try to get it as close as possible. Okay, so, but back to what I was saying, you can always, always take a picture and import something. Um, it's not as accurate as using like the pic scan mat would be. And I could have, probably could have done that for the MacBook itself because this is um, an 11 inch, but just throwing it out there. All right, so now what I can do, I'm actually gonna draw a square and I'm gonna size this square, let's do two inches. And I'm gonna bring this square down here and I can line it up anywhere with any of these 
measurements. So you can see that although my square is two by two, my ruler, my yardstick is saying that this is only a little over an inch and a half. So I'm going to select my template. Now you can do this part before or after you do your, um, your template. Okay. I need to zoom out just a little bit so I can get the edge of my picture, but I want to shrink this down until my square matches the measurements on my yardstick. So that that's pretty darn close guys. Let's see, let's do a little bit more. So there's three. And this is why it's so important to, um, to try to get it from straight, straight on top. So that way, you know, your your sizing, sometimes like depending on your camera, you'll get like that fish, fish eye. Okay, so I think that's probably as good as we're going to get. Now, another option is I can see here. All right, so my computer is actually because it's all the way over here. I lined, make sure I line these up. And so my computer is actually right at the what 11, like 11 and three fourths. So if I click on my template, yeah, so it says that the, the width of my device here is 11.6. Um, and as you can see, it's because I don't quite go all the way to the edge over here. So I'm just saying, like, there are a couple different ways to, to size this up. But I really like having a point of reference square here. So I'm actually, um, I can delete the rectangle. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and delete my picture. Like, my template is done. Um, but if I wanted to, and for this one, you know, I could, I do want to go ahead, I'm going to draw a, just a circle. And then I can center that with my design, with my template rather. And what that's going to do, and you might be like, Becky, that's not really in the middle. Well, I think that's because um, my picture is at a slant. Um, but hey, we're going to roll with it. But um you know, that way, if I wanted to use this and cut around the Apple icon, then I can do that. Um, another thing that I can do, and of course, um, you wouldn't want to do this for like, uh, like you wouldn't want to sell this because obviously um, this is the Apple logo, guys. I'm just going to show you if you wanted to be able to cut out the exact logo, then you would need to trace it. And I don't believe that I got a good enough picture to where that's actually going to be, you know, an accurate representation. But I mean, I could, I could do that, especially if I got a better picture. All right. So I'm going to, um, let's see, let's go back. I actually want the circle. So I'm just going to, I'm going to delete the picture. I don't need it anymore. And now I have my template and my, um, what am I trying to say guys? And, and the circle. All right, so let's make sure those are centered to each other. Now, um, you see you keep the red adjustment nodules here, right? I'm going to right click and I'm just going to hit convert to path and that's going to lock in that shape. That way I don't accidentally change anything. And then I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to open the modify panel and choose make a compound path. And if I want to, just to make it easier to see, I can fill it in with color. It doesn't have to be black. Actually, my uh, my SVG here is black, so I don't want to do that. So I am going to, we have to worry about our um, layers. All right, so I'm going to make sure that this is bring to front so that it is on top. And then I am free to line this up anywhere I want. If I want them exactly center, then I can do that. And what I'm going to do is I am actually going to subtract this uh, mandala from the uh, the layer underneath, okay, from the template. Before I do, before I do, all right, let's not get carried away. Remember when I said that we were going to do an internal um, offset? That way it, I'm not trying to go like all the way to the edge of the laptop. So I can release the compound path. I guess I got carried away, but I'm going to select the outline and I'm going to use the internal offset. And um, that actually looks good. I'm just going to leave it at the 1.25. Now, the reason that I don't really want to go all the way to the edge is because, you know, the size of the laptop, they start to turn down. I um, mean, I don't really want to have any bubbles or any, what am I trying to say, like warping back on track. 
I can align that. Let's fill that in just for effect. Although I have to admit, I'm going to actually cut this out of a pattern vinyl. Pretty excited. So I'm going to line these up and I'm going to open my modify panel and choose subtract. So pretty. All right. So I am going to turn my line color transparent and then let's zoom in. So the only thing that I like to watch out for is any small stray pieces. So like the inside, if I didn't want these little pieces, then you know, I could just delete those out. But if this is what I'm happy with, then I can select all of this and um, save it, or rather group it. Or um, I'm actually going to delete these outside corners and just save that part of it. And that's also gonna help me not have anything come all the way to the edge. Now, obviously the ends of my petals here, and then um, over here along these edges, those will still come, um, well, as close to edge to edge as we're gonna get today, um, but I'm just gonna group those together. And then I just, I really have a feeling that by those corners, um, you would probably have to cut some relief cuts or something because you need some sort of accommodation for the curve um, of the MacBook or laptop. All right, so just just things to take into consideration. If you're working with a curved surface, then try not to go, um, you know, all the way corner to corner. With that taken into consideration, I'm gonna put it up here towards the top. Of course, I'm gonna center it. Click over to my send panel. I'm going to select Vinyl Glossy. Now, if you are cutting smooth um, adhesive vinyl, then typically on your Cameo 4, the setting is gonna be fine. We do have room over here for a test cut. I always recommend that. I'm cutting this with a pattern. So what that means is that I actually increase my force a little bit. Um, and I am definitely going to do a test cut. That way I don't mess up my pattern. But I just wanted to let you guys know um, what I was doing. When you're like, well, Becky, um, you said that that would work. Why are you increasing it? Pattern adhesive vinyl a lot of times is thicker. Okay, so I am going to connect to my Cameo and then um, I'm gonna proceed to cut this out and then I'm gonna uh, talk to you guys about alignment. Okay, all right. All right, so here I am after cutting and I wanted to show you guys, well, let's go ahead and take that off. But I wanted to show you guys part of the reason that I set up that design like I did with the subtracting is because literally, with the exception of um, you know a few poke throughs, this is going to be a one pull. All right, so I don't have to worry about um, a whole bunch of weeding on the inside. All right, guys, so let's talk about what we're doing here. This is my decal, all right? Now, I really love it. Look how good it came out. And I feel kind of silly because um, I kind of bragged a little bit about how easy this was gonna be because I subtracted it out so it would just be one pull. Let me just specify, if this was not pattern, um, and hopefully you guys don't think I'm uh, a little crazy, I mean, maybe I am, but if this was not pattern and you guys were cutting this, especially like that pretty holographic, then you would be able to just one pull and pull it all up. But like I said, pattern is kind of thicker and it actually, um, I don't want to call it gummy, but it it's not um, an easy weeder. I feel like I always pick the complicated projects to show you guys. <laughs> And then also, so I have two pieces. That is not for any specific reason other than um, I'm trying to be less wasteful um, because I already have a whole bunch of these cut down for a different reason. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go ahead and um, just use these two separate pieces and I'm just going to layer them. I'm gonna overlap them. And that'll be one more thing that you guys can kind of see in action. So let's go ahead and start by taking, now the reason that I'm choosing this uh, specific transfer tape or one like it is because it has a um, translucent background. So can you see how I can see my vinyl through the backing? And the reason that that matters is because um, it will help me line it up on my laptop. Gosh, why was that so hard to say? It'll help me line it up on my laptop. All right, so this this is not what this is used for, all right? But I'm improvising. 
because I really need to make sure I get some good pressure. And I know it sounds weird, guys, but I have to get good pressure. This is a medium tack transfer tape. And so I like to use, um, and it doesn't have to be this exactly. Sometimes I'll use uh, different tools, but it has a finer tip here and it just seems to go into the smaller details well. So I don't know if that's making any sense or not, but with a medium tack transfer tape, um, I just feel like sometimes you need a little, a little extra love. So let's see how we did. No, we need some more. We need some more love. Sometimes too, um, I'll use my scissors. And I know you're like, Becky, just get your scraper. Uh, for whatever reason, I just don't have good luck with the medium tack and a scraper. It's almost like my scraper is too flexible to get me the pressure that I need. So let's see. So I think we did good with that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the second one. Now with this, this is, um, like I said, the translucent backing. And I do find it easier to pull the back from the front than um, the front from the back. Let's see how we did. Now try to keep it close to your design and it will transfer better. Kind of roll it, if that makes any sense. Okay, so with that taken care of, I'm actually going to take the back of my transfer tape. Now you have a glossy side, that's what your transfer tape was stuck to, and you have a matte side, that is the paper backing. So glossy side against your vinyl so that it doesn't stick. If you accidentally press it down um, on the paper side, then you'll have to cut a new decal. All right, so now for the big moment. All right, can you see? I don't know how well you guys can see on the camera, but I can line this up here, and then I can also line this up on the edges. So I just wanna make sure that I'm looking at it from all angles, because I do not, absolutely do not want a laptop with a crooked decal. As a matter of fact, if I want to, let's make this even easier. Let's trim around. So while I'm trimming, um, so you can use transfer tape that is a higher tack. And for most projects, that's what I recommend. The only reason um, that I'm using this one is because it, I feel like it's a trade-off. I get um, the medium tack because of the backing or I get the higher tack and there's no backing. So then I just have to kind of wing it. Um, if I was making this decal for a friend or family member, then I would either invite them over so that I could help them apply it because of the medium tack, um, or I would use a high tack and then trim around it like this. Okay, so let's get it lined up. And we're also gonna use something called the hinge method. So I'm going to use my painter's tape because, um, well, number one, it's what I have handy, but it's also um, has good, good sticking power without leaving a residue. And I'm going to go ahead and tape through the middle of my decal, all right? But I'm not going to stick it down yet, so I'm going to get my alignment right. Gosh, I'm so nervous, guys. All right, there we go. So I got my alignment. I'm actually going to wrap this bad boy around a laptop. All right, we are on there. It's not going anywhere. So I'm going to take my decal. I'm gonna peel back and I'm gonna trim off some of this paper. Okay, so now when I smooth it back down, it's gonna go right in place, okay? Oh, no take backs, right? So I'm right-handed, so I turn it around. I'll peel the tape back off. It doesn't have to be as extreme. So now I can peel this up and go ahead and remove. I don't have to remove all the backing at once. I can apply this in steps if I want to. Just make sure you don't pull any pieces off with your backing. Basically now I can slide this back down. There we go, I have a nice lined up decal. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure. All right, I'm gonna rub it down. Like I said, this is just a low tack transfer tape, or I mean a medium tack. So it shouldn't, I shouldn't have any problems peeling it off. Boom, there we go, guys. So what do you think? 
Is it not the cutest? I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So there we go. And that is how you make your own uh, decal for your laptop. So guys, how did you feel? All right, so I just have to say, just in case you notice, I was missing a piece and I went back and found it. <laughs> so hopefully you can see that in my pictures. We did manage to get a completed design, but I really like this guys. And I just have to make sure I treat it very gently until that clear case gets here. But pattern vinyl for the win, am I right? All right, guys, I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. Hopefully you enjoyed the project. And remember, you can use this with any type of laptop or even another device, okay? So make sure you get that clear photo from an overhead view and you're good to go. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up, but make sure you do your thing before you leave. Give us that like, subscribe, and share. Um, you know, it just really helps us to grow the channel and uh, that's how we're gonna be able to keep bringing you these awesome videos. So make sure you do that for me. And guys, thanks again. I'll see you next time.